Hello and welcome to Probability Theory. And as always, first I want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. If you are interested in the PDF version or a quiz for this video, you can find the link in the description. Okay, now in today's part 16, we will talk about the variance of a random variable. For this, please recall, we already know that the expectation is the number the random variable x fluctuates around. Therefore, the next question would be, can we measure how much it fluctuates around it? Here in the picture, we had a continuous case, so we had a probability density function, a PDF. And now the variance should measure how wide this PDF is. And roughly speaking, this will give us the variance v of x. And there you might already see, there could be a lot of different ways to measure it. However, the variance, as you will see, is the standard way because it has a lot of nice properties. And with this, I would say, let's immediately start with the definition. And of course, the assumptions you already know, we need the probability space and the random variable x. And here, please recall, because the random variable x maps into the real numbers, the expectation e of x is by definition also a real number. And the same holds for the variance, because it's also an expectation. Now, there are a lot of different notations for the variance, but most of the time you see v of x or var of x. Okay, now the question here is, how can we measure the deviation from the expectation? More precisely, we want to look at a new random variable given by x minus e of x. So you immediately see that this new random variable here has an expectation of zero. And now the question is, how much does the random variable deviate from zero? And now one idea would be to square this new random variable to get rid of negative values. Hence, together with the square, we have again a new random variable. And obviously, this new random variable does not have any contributions on the negative real number line. For example, in a continuous case, this here could be a PDF of this random variable. And of course, the important part here is, here we can measure a non-zero expectation. And exactly this one we want to calculate. And then we call it the variance of x. Hence you see, the only assumption we have to put in here is that this expectation exists. And in this case we have a well-defined number which tells us how much the random variable x deviates from its expectation. However, at this point it might be helpful to reformulate this whole definition. Namely, we can just expand the square. This means we first have x squared, then minus 2 times e of x times x, plus the last term e of x squared. And here you should note e of x is just a number, so of course just a constant random variable. And exactly this helps us now, because we can use the properties of the expectation, which we learned in the last video. In particular, the linearity can make this expression much simpler. So first we can pull out the minus sign and the plus sign. Hence we get here three different expectations. However, linearity also means we can pull out scalars. So in the middle part we can pull out the two, and e of x. So by doing this, we just have this constant times e of x. Moreover, we can also do this in the third part, which means we have this constant here times e of 1. However, e of 1 is of course simply 1. This is simply because by definition it's the abstract integral over omega of 1 dp. And this here is such a simple integral that you can immediately see this is p of omega. However, this one is a probability measure, so we know p of omega has to be 1. Hence, to cut a long story short, expectation of a constant is always this constant. So in our case, you see, we just have plus ex squared. However, 
you remember, the middle part is just ex squared with minus 2 in front. So in summary, we have the first part minus 1 times ex squared. In other words, this here you can also take as the definition for the variance of x. And indeed, this is not so hard to remember, because it's just the expectation with the square inside minus the expectation with the square outside. Therefore, if you already know the expectation of x to calculate the variance, you just have to calculate the expectation of the new random variable x squared. Therefore, we need the assumption here that this expectation exists. This means we want that the abstract integral of x squared exists. Okay, now if you don't want to deal with these abstract integrals, we can do the same as for the normal expectation e of x and just go to the two important cases. The only thing we need there is the change of variables formula. And then we can easily look at the continuous case and the discrete case. Here I think I don't have to go into the details because we have already discussed this for the expectation. The only difference you see is now here we have x squared. However, please recall in the continuous case we have a PDF, a probability density function and in a discrete case we have a probability mass function. Okay, then we are ready for examples now. Now, the first one should be a simple one, but also a very important one. And indeed, what we want to choose is a discrete uniform distribution. We can make this to a general case where we have n possible outcomes. And maybe let's call them lowercase x1, lowercase x2 and so on. Of course, this is a discrete case and uniform just means that every outcome has the same probability. More precisely, it means the distribution Px of the singleton xi is exactly 1 over n. And of course, n is the number of the possible outcomes. So you see, this is a generalization of a fair die. Therefore, you already know how to calculate the expectation. So maybe let's do this very quickly. We have our abstract integral, which can be written as a sum. And we know the sum should go from j is equal to 1 to n. And then we have our outcome xj times the probability of the singleton xj. However, we already know this is a constant, so we can pull it out of the sum. So what we get is 1 over n times this sum. In fact, this expression you might know as the arithmetic mean of the numbers x1 to xn. And often one uses a short notation for this with lowercase x overline. So what you should see here is the expectation is a straightforward generalization of the arithmetic mean. Therefore, the next question would be what does the variance tell us in this case? And indeed, for this example, it might be helpful to use the original definition of the variance. It's helpful because we can translate this single abstract integral into a sum. And in fact, we have a shorter notation here because we use x overline for the expectation of x. Okay, then again, the change of variables formula concludes that here we have the sum of xj minus x bar but now, of course, squared. And of course, times the same probability as before, where we know it's constant. Hence, you see, the result for the variance of x is 1 over n, times the sum of the quadratic deviations from the mean. So, this might be a formula you also already know, but you see, the variance of x generalizes this formula. Okay, then I would say, we should also look at a second example. And now let's take a continuous case we've also already discussed. Namely, x should be given by an exponential distribution. And for this, from the last video, you should know the expectation is 1 over lambda. Hence, in order to calculate the variance, we need to calculate the expectation of x squared. Now, in this case, we can use that we can translate this abstract integral of x squared into an ordinary integral. The only ingredient we need is the probability density function of the exponential distribution. In fact, 
This we know from the last video. Therefore, we immediately get a very concrete integral. It's the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared times lambda times e to the power minus lambda times x. And in order to solve this integral, you should use integration by parts. In fact, you need to do this two times. And then we don't have an x squared in the integral anymore and we know the antiderivative. Now, I will skip this calculation and just tell you the result. It's 2 divided by lambda squared. Okay, now you should see, with these two results, we can calculate the variance. We just need e of x squared, and then we subtract the expectation squared. In other words, we get out 1 divided by lambda squared. And there you see, this is the general variance of the exponential distribution. Okay, so we will continue talking about the variance of a random variable in the next video, and there I also show you which nice properties the variance has. Therefore, I really hope that I see you there. Have a nice day and bye!